When Manchester United won the FA Cup in 1963, the skipper was Noel Cantwell. The fullback from County Cork in Ireland played 146 times for the Reds, scoring eight goals. But he first made his name in the 50s at West Ham's Academy of Football. We talked an awful lot about football, 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 football. And I remember going to Manchester United thinking it would be the very same at United as it was at West Ham. It wasn't anything like it. At United, there were very, very good players like the Charltons, like the Violets, like those fellows around. So consequently, they didn't have to work very hard at their game to be successful. As well as lifting the FA Cup in 63, Campbell was twice a member of our title-winning squads, as United went on to become league champions in both 1965 and 1967. He'd signed from West Ham in November 1960 for £29,500, for what was then a record fee for a fullback. In this episode, we hear from the late United hero talking about his early career at West Ham, where a big influence was Malcolm Allison, who'd end up at City, of course. This chat with their Hammers teammate John Bond was filmed at the famous Casataris Cafe, just around the corner from the old Upton Park. Part of their group were Dave Sexton, second from the left, and Frank O'Farrell, second from the right, both future managers of Manchester United. But it was Alisson, who was the leader of the pack, not only helping shape Noel Campwell's future, you could say their get-togethers were an early example of player power, long before managers and coaches took control of the way teams played. Malcolm became involved with Walter Winterbottom and some of the people who wanted to make progress on the coaching side. So he'd go to Lillyshaw and come back with lots of bump and lots of ideas. And basically, he made us believe all his ideas were right. Maybe all of them weren't right, but we just believed in them. We were just disciples. We didn't have businesses. We didn't have enough money to do anything else other than just train and uh, come in here. And we used to get a voucher from... Why Casataris became so prominent is that we used to get a voucher from the, from the club for about two and sixpence. To, isn't that about right? Yeah, so we used to come in here for our lunch and this is where it all used to happen. And how much was the lunch normally in those days? Oh, we used to have to make a profit, you see. If you didn't spend the two and six, you could, you could have the rest of it. Some fellas, I think, came in and cashed in and didn't have anything. We started having meetings together and looking at our training programmes and, as, as John said, about going back in the afternoon. We go back and always practice, just four or five of us. If you wanted to come back, you're welcome. If you didn't, if you weren't interested, nobody said anything to you. So we became the groundsman nightmare around here because the ground was always very heavy and tacky. But then we started to look at what times we should train and whether we should train in the afternoons late in the week. We brought in the introduction of the guy coming to do weights, some weight training to develop strength, up body strength, or else whatever deficiency you might have. We also got a first physiotherapist. Um, who was outside of the, because our training, the trainer was, as they used to be, just an old player with no qualifications, no qualifications whatsoever. We had a dear old trainer who played in the 1923 22. Cup final, yeah. um, Billy Moore, and the, the story is told, and I, we can all relate to it, if you asked for a massage, you were injured, Billy would have a cigarette in his mouth, and he'd be blowing the ash onto you. And he'd burn you. Sometimes fellas came over the middle. So consequently, you decided not to go in there for a massage or anything like that. So we got a fellow called Bill Jenkins, wasn't it? He had a, a, a place around the corner here. So we, we asked Ted and convinced Ted that we should have a, a full-time physio at the ground. And he was one of the first. He, we got him to join. And we, we modified Malcolm again. You know, the, the strip was drowsy and dull and long heavy. shorts and heavy and their big shin pads. So we got away from all that. We decided, there's a story. I remember one time we got a new strip very early in the season, probably for the first league match at home, and it had long sleeves. And as used to happen in early in the season, the weather was fantastic, it was in the 80s. So Malcolm decided, Ted Fenton was up in his office. Malcolm decided, he asked Billy Moore for a scissors. So he says, yeah, okay, oh, Malcolm, gave him the scissors. Malcolm cut the sleeves off every shirt. So when, when Ted Fenton came down and looked, he didn't say anything either. Well, just leave him, let him get on with it. So we went out with short sleeves when we, when we should have had long sleeve shirts. Lots of things happened there. Yeah. Well, we, we changed actually, we changed the style of football gear, hmm. you know, because we wore short shorts and then we, had, we got lightweight boots, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and that was when Adidas had just invented the soft toe. Hmm. And Ted, Ted Fenton had a sports shop. Hmm. And uh, Adidas came over and spoke to Ted Fenton and said, uh, 
Ted, we want you to represent us, you know, for this soft toe. He said, it'll never take off. Mm. Never take yeah. off, he said. <laughs> but you just have to get the hammer, didn't you, when you first got there and hammer the, the big old oh, hard oh, toes yeah. down, just a hammer. Yeah. Well, then Arthur Rowe, I thought, was one of the first who bought a boot out, and all of a sudden mm. he bought a streamlined boot out with toes pointing mm. down, and the toes were soft, weren't they? Yeah. And like everybody at that particular time wanted an Arthur Rowe boot. But I mean, the criteria at that time, I, I don't know whether it's improved, but I mean, the criteria to get the manager's job was what, you didn't have to know too much, you had to be a player, yeah. and if somebody liked you and fancied you, you could get a manager's job. I mean, it was, I don't think anybody ever used to give well, team yeah. talks or anything. I mean, I can't, at the time when I first started, in 50, 51, I mean, no, but I can't remember ever going in the dressing room and somebody standing in there and giving you a team yeah. talk and saying, well, you do this yeah. and you do, you used to get, get your gear yeah. on Saturday afternoons and you used to go well, out there and play. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we yeah. sorted a little thing at him and I, yeah. when we played, we free sorted kicks. a little fr thing with free kicks. Did, w we weren't aware at, at, at that particular time. I was made totally and wholly aware of it when I worked under Ron Greenwood. But we wasn't aware of space, mm. you know, between the ball and, and players and, and between two people and all that. All he used to do, my mm. strength was kicking. Mm. So all he used to do when we used to get a free kick wide on the edge of the box or somewhere, he used to get everybody back past Away. the far post and leave a big space. And he'd say, that's mine. And then I used to just drop the ball into space and he used to come I knew, I knew where it was going to be. So all and I had to do was get across people and get there at the time. Got ten goals in your I, I always remember we went to Villa Park. I'll remember it for as long as I live. We went to Villa Park and we was losing 1-0. And we got a free kick. And Billy Moore told me, the old Billy Moore who now I was just talking about, told me a story after the game. We got a free kick on the edge of the box, on the side of the box. And we was losing 1-0 and we got this free kick. And he said, West Ham, Aston Villa won, West Ham won. And that was before I took the free kick. Yeah. And I just put the thing in and up. Back of the net. Mm -hmm. We used to do it regularly, mm -hmm. but we weren't. We weren't. You know, we just worked that Nobody little thing out that. about with ourselves and those sort of things. Well, it's like when you start thinking, you know, and then mm -hmm. other thoughts come to your mind. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and that, the good thing about all that, you know, was that Malcolm Musco and Frank O'Farrell and Jimmy Andrews, you know, they all used to come up with the ideas, and Noel would come up, and John would come up with ideas. You know, mm -hmm. so they all the ideas started to build up, and then, mm -hmm. then we'd say, okay, or I'd say, come on, then we go back to the ground and we yeah, practice that, you know. Yeah. Tremendous, yeah. And that's the, that was the, the how we how we. And we create we created a method of play by dropping balls into centre forwards. Yeah, Whereas right. one time people just bashed it down there, and we thought this is the way to do. It. Like we used to, it was a bit of a nightmare for poor old Ted Fenton because Malcolm wanted to play football right from the back. Now he was a good passer of a ball. He wasn't quick, but he was very comfortable on the ball. Most centre halves at the time wouldn't accept responsibility but he wanted the goalkeeper to throw it out to him or throw it out to John. John had passed it square. Well Ted Fenton used to go spare in the stand sometimes because we all obviously we had to make some mistakes but it was attractive to play and of course the teams from the north of England used to like coming to play West Ham because you always gave them a chance. We weren't the most physical team but we were very difficult to beat because we were a useful team of passers and then we'd drop it into the Vic Keebler, drop it into the front man and all of a sudden start from there. So we made quite a few mistakes. One does when you're changing football as we try to change it here. Um, and Ted probably wasn't a strong enough man to say, now you can do this, but you can't do that. And consequently, we went overboard in some, some of the occasions in, in our efforts to just you know do what we wanted to do. So I think had he been a more positive and had he been a little more knowledgeable, but then again, as John said, people didn't go on coaching courses. Pe people became trainers and managers, and the, the, everybody's system was the same. He said to me, Malcolm, I want you to train the kids. Yeah. It was the first time yeah. I'd ever seen a, a player Sorry. go and train the way in Charlton or anywhere, you know. And I said, okay, Ted. He said, I'll give you 30 shillings at night, you know, and I want you to take them two nights a week. Mm. So I said, okay. So I went, and there was a bunch of kids there who could really play. Yeah. I mean, it was Bobby, Mar Bobby Moore, Martin Peters, Jeff Hurst, uh, Johnny, Cartwright, Johnny Cartwright, even Tony Terry Scott, Venables. Terry Venables down there. there was all these kids who were all, all 12, 13, 14. You know. mm. and, uh, and I used to go and work with them. At night Tuesday time. and Thursday nights. Yeah. And, uh, and then when I left, I think Noel went mm. and took over. Mm. But that was, that was a good thing for those kids, you know. Mm. And I remember Bobby Moore. I went out to get the bus home. And I was standing at the bus stop and he came over. He was, he was about 12, 12 and a half. And he said, Mr. Allison, can I sit next to you on the bus? So I said, yes, yeah, certainly, of course you can. Yeah. 
So he's sitting next to me and he's asking me all these questions. You know, what's the most important thing about football? So and so and so and so and so and so. If you're a defender, you know, I said, well, the most important thing when you're a defender is to know what you're going to do before you get it, you know. I said, you have to be, be able to read things. Now, he, he had a brain like a computer. Mm. He wasn't quick, mm. he wasn't great in the air, mm. you know, but I'll tell you what, his reading the game was brilliant, absolutely mm. brilliant. Mm. And I remember I was sitting next to a French international who played in the World Cup, I, I can't remember his name at the present time. He was a great player, scored a lot of goals. What, Copa? Yeah, Copa. Yeah. Raymond Copa. And he said to me, you know, Malcolm, he said, I wouldn't have known Bobby Moore was playing, he said, till he made that mistake. Yeah. But he never used to make a mistake. Yeah. Mm. And that's how he was. Mm. And that was a good thing, you know, one of the but good the things. But the great thing about him as well is that these are the things after you and after us that I found out from Ron Greenwood. I mean, Ron yeah. Greenwood's coaching was yeah. simplicity itself. Mm. Simplicity itself. I mean, never did defence versus attack or anything. I mean, everything we all used to do was a ball between two, ball between three, ball be mm. between four, maybe mm. five sometimes. I mean, this, the simplicity of Bobby Moore was which mm. it took years and years. I mean, I always remember Bill McGarry stating that he didn't think he could play. He thought he was, and he'd played a few times for England at that particular time. But I mean, Bobby never, ever, ever did anything difficult. Mm. Never did anything. I mean, if it needed to be played short, he'd play it short. If it needed to be knocked back the keeper, if it needed to be knocked long, he'd knock. His ideas and thoughts about it was unbelievable. Mm. But the simplicity of the fellow was, was, was the greatness of it. Mm. When I was ill, and uh, Noel was captain. And uh, I'd come out of hospital and I'd been training for about six weeks. And Noel, Noel, Noel was asked up to Ted Fender's office, go and tell him. Yeah, well, um, I was asked up, I think it might have been the morning of the game or the morning before the game. And uh, Ted Fenton said to me, I've got a problem here. He said, uh, we were playing Man United, which is a first division game. And he said, uh, we've got, they've got Ernie Taylor, little fella. And Malcolm, I think Kenny Brown was centre back at the time. Malcolm yeah, was, was playing play left, left half. half. And, you know, he wasn't as mobile as one would want to follow at left half. But he was very, very willing. And one of the things, Malcolm was very confident. That was one thing, you know, he always had too much sometimes. So, anyway, Ted Fenton said to me, no, who would you play against Man United tonight or tomorrow? So I just thought for a second. I said, uh, I would play Bobby Moore. So he said, would you? I said, yeah, I'd play Bobby. This was his first game. So Malcolm got to know, got to know that I had influenced. And like, he came in the dressing room after and he gave me an almighty volley saying he could have played with his ankles tied and played against Ernie Taylor. And Malcolm never played a first division game. Yeah, did I did, I played three for Charlton, yes. Oh, no, but not for West Ham, no, no. not for West Ham. So, you know, it was a, a, great, a regret I had for a lot of years after. It's totally different now because obviously the money wasn't in the game then. Um, so we weren't involved in anything else. None of us had a business. Malcolm was the only fellow with a car. The rest of us had to get in buses and things like that. So there wasn't the temptations. And it was just, I, we found it easy because we didn't have the distractions. And I found later on that we talked an awful lot about football, 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 football. And I remember going to Manchester United and thinking it would be the very same at United as it was at West Ham. It wasn't anything like it. At United, there were very, very good players like the Charltons, like the Violets, like those fellas around. So consequently, they didn't have to work very hard at their game to be successful. We had to work here. We had to have a good method of play. We had, we had to know what we were doing to be successful. They were individually better players at Old Trafford. I remember one time being on the bus talking to somebody about what we were going to do, what we weren't going to do, whether it worked or it didn't work. And Bobby Charlton came on the bus and he said to me, no, you're not at it again. You're not talking football. So that was all one did. That's all we did in the 50s here.